In Greco-Roman geography, Iberia (Ancient Greek: Iberia, Latin: Iberia) was an exonym, foreign name, for the Georgian kingdom of Kartli, Georgian Kartli, known after its core province, which during classical antiquity and the early Middle Ages was a significant monarchy in the Caucasus, either as an independent state or as a dependent of larger empires, notably the Sassanid and Roman empires. Iberia, centered on present-day eastern Georgia, was bordered by Colchis in the west, Caucasian Albania in the east and Armenia in the south. Its population, the Iberians, formed the nucleus of the Georgians Kartvelians. Iberia, ruled by the Farnavazid, Arsacid and Chosroid royal dynasties, together with Colchis to its west, would form the nucleus of the unified medieval kingdom of Georgia under the Bagrationi dynasty. In the 4th century, after the Christianization of Iberia by Saint Nino during the reign of King Mirian III, Christianity was made the state religion of the kingdom. Starting in the early 6th century AD, the kingdom's position as a Sasanian vassal state was changed into direct Persian rule. In 580, King Hormuzd IV 578 abolished the monarchy after the death of King Bakir III, and Iberia became a Persian province ruled by a marzipan governor. The term, ''Caucasian Iberia'' is used to distinguish it from the Iberian Peninsula in southern Europe. Name The provenance of the name, Iberia, is unclear. One theory on the etymology of the name Iberia, proposed by Georgi Melikashvili, was that it was derived from the contemporary Armenian designation for Georgia, Verk Armenian, Verk and Iverk Iverk and Iverk, Iverk which itself was connected to the word Sver or Sphere, the Kartvelian designation for Georgians. The letter, S, in this instance served as a prefix for the root word, Vir, or Vir. Accordingly, in following Ivan Javakishvili's theory, the ethnic designation of Sber, a variant of Sver, was derived from the word Hber, Hver, and thus Iberia and the Armenian variants, Viria and Viria. According to another theory, it is derived from a Colchian word, Imer, meaning country on the other side of the mountain. That is of the Licky Range, which divided Colchis and Iberia from each other. History Early history In earliest times, the area of Caucasian Iberia was inhabited by several related tribes stemming from the Kura Araxes culture, collectively called Iberians or Eastern Iberians in Greco-Roman ethnography. The Mashi, mentioned by various classic historians, and their possible descendants, the Saspers who were mentioned by Herodotus, may have played a crucial role in the consolidation of the tribes inhabiting the area. The Mashi had moved slowly to the northeast forming settlements as they traveled. One of these was Mts Keta, the future capital of the Kingdom of Iberia. The Mts Keta tribe was later ruled by a prince locally known as Mamasaklisi father of the household in Georgian. The written sources for the early periods of Iberia's history are mostly medieval Georgian chronicles, that modern scholarship interpret as a semi-legendary narrative. One such chronicle, Moktsave Kartlise, conversion of Kartli, mentions that a ruler named Azo and his people came from Arian Kartli, the initial home of the Proto-Iberians, which had been under Achaemenid rule until the fall of the Persian Empire, and settled on the site where Mts Keta was to be founded. Another Georgian chronicle, Kartlis Skariba, history of Kartli, claims Azo to be an officer of Alexander's, who massacred a local ruling family and conquered the area until being defeated at the end of the fourth century BC by Prince Farnavas, at that time a local chief. The story of Alexander's invasion of Kartli, although legendary, nevertheless reflects the establishment of Georgian monarchy in the Hellenistic period and the desire of later Georgian literati to connect this event to the celebrated conqueror. Topic. Farnava's I and his descendants Farnava's, victorious in a power struggle, became the first king of Iberia c. 302 c. 237 BC. 
According to the later Georgian chronicles, after driving back an invasion, he subjugated the neighboring areas, including a significant part of the western Georgian state of Colchis, locally known as Egrisi, and seems to have secured recognition of the newly founded state by the Seleucids of Syria. Farnavas is also said to have built a major citadel, the Armistique, and a temple to the god Armazi, and to have created a new system of administration, subdividing the country into several counties called Sarastavos. His successors managed to gain control over the mountainous passes of the Caucasus with the Daryal also known as the Iberian Gates being the most important of them. The period following this time of prosperity was one of incessant warfare as Iberia was forced to defend against numerous invasions into its territories. Some southern parts of Iberia, that were conquered from Kingdom of Armenia, in the 2nd century BC were reunited to Armenia and the Colchian lands seceded to form separate princedoms at the end of the 2nd century BC, the Farnavazid king Farnajam was dethroned by his own subjects and the crown given to the Armenian prince Artaxias who ascended the Iberian throne in 93 BC, establishing the Artaxia dynasty of Iberia. <laughs> Roman period and Roman-Parthian rivalry This close association with Armenia and Pontus brought upon the country an invasion 65 BC by the Roman general Pompey, who was then at war with Mithridates v of Pontus, and Armenia, but Rome did not establish her power permanently over Iberia. Nineteen years later, the Romans again marched 36 BC on Iberia forcing King Farnavas II to join their campaign against Albania. While another Georgian kingdom of Colchis was administered as a Roman province, Iberia freely accepted the Roman imperial protection. A stone inscription discovered at Mts Kedah speaks of the 1st century ruler Midrat I AD 58 as the friend of the Caesars and the king of the Roman loving Iberians. Emperor Vespasian fortified the ancient Mts Kedah site of Arzami for the Iberian kings in AD 75. The next two centuries saw a continuation of Roman influence over the area, but by the reign of King Farsman II Iberia had regained some of its former power. Relations between the Roman Emperor Hadrian and Farsman II were strained, though Hadrian is said to have sought to appease Farsman. However, it was only under Hadrian's successor Antoninus Pius that relations improved to the extent that Farsman is said to have even visited Rome, where Dio Cassius reports that a statue was erected in his honor and that rites to sacrifice were given. The period brought a major change to the political status of Iberia with Rome recognizing them as an ally, rather than their former status as a subject state, a political situation which remained the same, even during the empire's hostilities with the Parthians. From the first centuries of the Christian era, the cult of Mithras and Zoroastrianism were commonly practiced in Iberia. Excavation of rich burials in Bori, Armazi, and Zagudiri has produced silver drinking cups with the impression of a horse either standing at a fire altar or with its right foreleg raised above the altar. The cult of Mithras, distinguished by its syncretic character and thus complementary to local cults, especially the cult of the sun, gradually came to merge with ancient Georgian beliefs. It is even thought that Mithras must have been the precursor of St. George in pagan Georgia. Step by step, Iranian beliefs and ways of life penetrated deeply the practices of the Iberian court and elite. The Armazian script and language, which is based on Aramaic, see Saratelli, was adopted officially. A number of inscriptions in Aramaic of the classical, Hellenistic periods are known from Colchis as well. The court was organized on Iranian models, the elite dress was influenced by Iranian costume, the Iberian elite adopted Iranian personal names, and the official cult of Armazi. Q. V was introduced by King Farnavas in the 3rd century BC connected by the medieval Georgian chronicle to Zoroastrianism. <laughs> Between Rome, Byzantium and Persia Decisive for the future history of Iberia was the foundation of the Sasanian or Sassanid Empire in 224 by Ardashir I. By replacing the weak Parthian realm with a strong, centralized state, it changed the political orientation of Iberia away from Rome. Iberia became a tributary of the Sasanian state during the reign of Shapur I 
Relations between the two countries seem to have been friendly at first, as Iberia cooperated in Persian campaigns against Rome, and the Iberian king Amazasp III 260 was listed as a high dignitary of the Sasanian realm, not a vassal who had been subdued by force of arms. But the aggressive tendencies of the Sasanians were evident in their propagation of Zoroastrianism, which was probably established in Iberia between the 260s and 290s. However, in the Peace of Nisibis 298, while the Roman Empire obtained control of Caucasian Iberia again as a vassal state and acknowledged the reign over all the Caucasian area, it recognized Mirian III, the first of the Chosroid dynasty, as king of Iberia. <laughs> Adoption of Orthodoxy and Sassanid Persian period Roman predominance proved crucial in religious matters, since King Mirian III and leading nobles converted to Eastern Orthodoxy around 317 and declared Orthodoxy as state religion. The event is related with the mission of a Cappadocian woman, Saint Nino, who since 303 had preached Orthodoxy in the Georgian Kingdom of Iberia Eastern Georgia. The religion would become a strong tie between Georgia and Rome later Byzantium and have a large-scale impact on the state's culture and society. Iranian elements in ancient Georgian art and archaeology gradually started to cease gradually as well since the adoption of Eastern Orthodoxy in the same century. However, after the Emperor Julian was slain during his failed campaign in Persia in 363, Rome ceded control of Iberia to Persia, and King Varaz Bakir I became a Persian vassal, an outcome confirmed by the Peace of Asilocene in 387. However, a later ruler of Kartli, Farsman IV 406 to 409, preserved his country's autonomy and ceased to pay tribute to Persia. Persia prevailed, and Sasanian kings began to appoint a viceroy Pityaxi, Pityaxi, to keep watch on their vassal. They eventually made the office hereditary in the ruling house of Lower Kartli, thus inaugurating the Kartli Pityaxate, which brought an extensive territory under its control. Although it remained a part of the Kingdom of Kartli, its viceroys turned their domain into a center of Persian influence. Sasanian rulers put the Christianity of the Georgians to a severe test. They promoted the teachings of Zoroaster, and by the middle of the 5th century Zoroastrianism had become a second official religion in eastern Georgia alongside Eastern Orthodoxy. The early reign of the Iberian king Vakhtang I dubbed Gorgasali was marked by the relative revival of the kingdom. Formerly a vassal of the Persians, he secured the northern borders by subjugating the Caucasian mountaineers, and brought the adjacent western and southern Georgian lands under his control. He established an autocephalic patriarchate at Mts Keta, and made Tbilisi his capital. In 482 he led a general uprising against Persia and started a desperate war for independence that lasted for 20 years. He could not get Byzantine support and was eventually defeated, dying in battle in 502. <laughs> Fall of the Kingdom The continuing rivalry between Byzantium and Sasanian Persia for supremacy in the Caucasus, and the next unsuccessful insurrection 523 of the Georgians under Gurgan had severe consequences for the country. Thereafter, the king of Iberia had only nominal power, while the country was effectively ruled by the Persians. In 580, Hormuzd IV 578 abolished the monarchy after the death of King Bakir III, and Iberia became a Persian province ruled by a marzipan governor. Georgian nobles urged the Byzantine Emperor Maurice to revive the Kingdom of Iberia in 582, but in 591 Byzantium and Persia agreed to divide Iberia between them, with Tbilisi to be in Persian hands and Mts Keta to be under Byzantine control. At the beginning of the 7th century the truce between Byzantium and Persia collapsed. The Iberian prince Stephanos I c. 590-627, decided in 607 to join forces with Persia in order to reunite all the territories of Iberia, a goal he seems to have accomplished. But Emperor Heraclius's offensive in 627 and 628 brought victory over the Georgians and Persians and ensured Byzantine predominance in western and eastern Georgia until the invasion of the Caucasus by the Arabs. <laughs> Arab period 
The Arabs reached Iberia about 645 and forced its Aristavi, Prince, Stephanos II 637 c. 650, to abandon his allegiance to Byzantium and recognize the caliph as his suzerain. Iberia thus became a tributary state and an Arab emir was installed in Tbilisi about 653. At the beginning of the 9th century, Aristavi Ashat I of the new Bagrationi dynasty, from his base in southwestern Georgia, took advantage of the weakening of the Arab rule to establish himself as hereditary prince with the Byzantine title Koropalates of Iberia. A successor, Adarnase IV of Iberia, formerly a vassal of Byzantium, was crowned as the King of Georgians in 888. His descendant Bagrat III brought the various principalities together to form a united Georgian state. <laughs> Eastern and Western Iberians The similarity of the name with the old inhabitants of the Iberian Peninsula, the Western Iberians, has led to an idea of ethnogenetical kinship between them and the people of Caucasian Iberia called the Eastern Iberians. It has been advocated by various ancient and medieval authors, although they differed in approach to the problem of the initial place of their origin. The theory seems to have been popular in medieval Georgia. The prominent Georgian religious writer George the Hagiorite (1009–1065) wrote about the wish of certain Georgian nobles to travel to the Iberian Peninsula and visit the local Georgians of the West, as he called them. Topic. See also. Georgian monarchs family tree of Iberia. Roman Georgia. Sasanian Iberia.